see one. Good morning and welcome to the 8.30 a.m. meeting of the Tulsa International Airport Development Trust and subsequent to this meeting, the meeting of the members of the Tulsa Airport Authority and the trustees of the Tulsa Airport Improvement Trust. Please remember in addition to the video conference link on our public notice, once the meeting is uploaded, you can view this meeting on the Tulsa Airport's YouTube page. To ensure our viewers from remote locations can see and hear our presenters and the trustees, we ask that all guests joining by video conference link, please turn off their cameras. For our trustees and presenting guests, please remember to mute your microphone on your computer or your phone when you are not speaking. Individuals using their phones are asked not to put this meeting on hold. As we move through each item, we will ask our presenters to speak. Trustees, please hold all questions until the end of each presentation. At the end of each presentation, the chair will call for discussion and a motion in second. Trustees with questions may proceed when called. If a trustee needs to leave a meeting at any time, please verbally announce your intention to do so prior to leaving the meeting. If during this meeting our audio or our audio is lost or compromised, we will attempt to restore communications for a maximum of 30 minutes. If we are unable to restore communications, this meeting will reconvene today. Thursday, June 11th, 4 p.m. at the Airport Small Conference Room, Suite A211, 7777 Airport Drive, Tulsa, Oklahoma. In the event the meeting is reconvened, you may access the reconvened meeting virtually by using the link and phone numbers provided on the official meeting notice. Sava? Very good. Um, I'd like to call, uh, uh, call to order the Tulsa International Airport Development Trust um, Jeff, please take the roll. Yes, Kent Harrell. Here, I had it muted. That's fine. Mary Smith Cross. Here. Joe Robson. Here. Thank you. Michael Willis. Not present. Stan Sully. Not present. Cayenne Camus. Thomas. Here. And Jeff Stava. Here. Very good. Um, first, I'd like to introduce Kayan Camus. She's the Chief of Economic Development for the City of Tulsa, and she'll be uh, sitting in for uh, Mayor G.T. Bynum uh, this morning. Welcome, Kayan. Thank you, guys. Um, number two, approve the minutes from our September 12th annual meeting. Do I have a motion? This is Joe Robson. I would move approval of the minutes. Second. Mary Smith. All those in favor? Uh, Jeff, please take the roll. Kent Harrell? Aye. Mary Smith Cross? Aye. Joe Robson? Aye. Kyan, Kyan Camus? Aye. Motion passes. Very good. Number three, approve payment and invoice uh, from Tulsa Airport's Improvement Trust for services rendered in the amount of $49,202.56. Yeah. Alexis? Yeah, thank you, Jeff. So the airport, Tate, has pre-funded a lot of the work for the TIF district, the setup of the districts, um, the legal work, the surveying work that we've had to do to get them established. Currently, um, there's $241,975.76 in outstanding invoices that Tate is eventually going to seek reimbursement from TIADT for. Um, my intent is not to deplete the account of the TIADT right now, and so we're only asking for a quarter or 25% of those funds to be paid, which represent the $49,202.56. Are there any questions uh, for Alexis about this invoice and our payment of it? Seeing no Joe questions, Robson, do I have I a motion move. for approval? I would move approval. This is Joe Robson. Cayenne, second. Okay, Jeff, can you please take the roll? Absolutely. Kent Harrell? Aye. Mary Smith Cross? Aye. Joe Robson? Aye. Kai and Camus? Aye. Motion carries. Very good. Thank you, Jeff. 
Uh, number four, approved development and financing assistance agreement with, with and between TIADT and L3 Harris Technologies Incorporated. Alexis. Okay, so L3 Harris, we have a couple of slides here. Um, James, you might have to click through them for me. But they moved from Riverside Airport up to Tulsa International Airport about 15 years ago, I want to say maybe 10 years ago. They're located on the corner of Apache and Sheridan. They do a lot of different things, but a lot of DOD work, a, um, a lot of things that we really can't talk about because it's super top secret, but all of their jobs are um, engineering, their, their software systems engineering, their high tech jobs that have a high average salary, and they continue to win contracts um, which is really putting a constraint on their facilities here at Tulsa International. Uh, we, we've talked with them several times, and, and one of the challenges that they're facing right now is they've hired some additional people, and as everybody gets back into the office as we're trying to return things to normal, um, they, they don't have adequate parking for all of the people that they now have um, and that they plan to add over the next year. And so they came to us and to the city and asked if, if we would be able to support a portion of the cost for a new parking lot as they continue to expand. They requested $260,000. Um, as you can see from the map, they fall just outside of the D or District 9, as it's called now, um, TIF district, but they do fall within the project plan boundary. They can <laughs> use funds that are generated in District D um, on this facility because it is within the boundary. Um, this will be <clears throat> the first award of TIDT to a tenant of Tate. And so I just wanted to take a second to remind you of when we started the TIF districts, kind of what the objectives were. Um, so we wanted to facilitate the development of property at the airport, support existing businesses and employers to serve as a catalyst for retaining and expanding employment and to stimulate private commitments to invest and reinvest within the project area. And so I think with this support, L3, we're, we're providing support to an important airport, prop, um, a, important airport tenant, and I would just encourage you all to, to approve it. And James, the next slide kind of gives you an overall view. Again, everything within that blue boundary, that um, perimeter boundary is the project plan boundary. And so whatever we, whatever funds we have in District D and eventually when we activate District E um, can be used for development projects within that project boundary. So with that, I'd recommend approval. Alexis, Is there any questions? Yeah, go ahead, Kyan. Yeah, I was just gonna note, um, Alexis noted that um, they also came to the city to request support and we are in the process of approving uh, $125,000 in support from the Economic Development Infrastructure Fund. Um, we had planned to have a resolution on the council agenda yesterday. We, we pulled it as we're working out um, the, the, just some nuances related to what entity, what current L3 entity we should be contracting with uh, for, for, this, for the city incentive. Um, but the staff committee has already approved it. We don't expect that we'll have any any problems getting it approved by city council. So that'll be $125,000 in city funds that will, will be matched with, with this uh, potential funding. Good. Are there any other questions for either Alexis or Cayenne? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. So move. This is Cayenne. Second. This is Mary. Jeff, please take the roll. Hugh. Harold. Aye. Mary Smith Cross. Aye. Joe Robson. Aye. Kyan Camus. Aye. Motion passes. Very good. I would take a entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved, Mary. So I check. Go. Jeff, please take the roll. Ken Harrell? Aye. Mary Smith Cross? Aye. Joe Robson? Aye. 
Kind Camus? Aye. Okay, motion, motion to adjourn is approved. We are adjourned. Um, I would like to call to order the combined being of the Tulsa Airports Improvement Trust special meeting and the Tulsa Airport Authority regular meeting for Thursday, June 11th at 8.30 a.m. Jeff, do you need to reread anything or are we, are we no, clear? We're good. we're good. I have a roll call. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I would like to call the meeting to order and I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes from our combined meetings of May 14th, 2020. Motion to approve the minutes, Mary. Second, Kent Harrell. Kent Harrell? Yes. Mary, Mary Smith Cross? Aye. Mary Smith Cross votes aye. Joe Robson? Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. Kyan Camus? Aye. Kyan Camus votes aye. Motion approved. Minutes are approved. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, Executive officer's report. Okay, so um, it's been an interesting um, month or so. So I just got the numbers from Fabio for May, and we had almost 18,000 passengers for the month of May, which is significantly better than we experienced in April. Um, it's still about 20% of what we saw last May. But um, I think the good news is, is that we are seeing more people in the building. I know a lot of people are looking for good fare deals. Southwest Airlines, um, American, Delta, United, Allegiant, they all are offering great fares right now. And so if travel is in your future, I would suggest you know our people, our, our customers go out and look and see if there's a good fit for them. Um, but there are other things going on in the airport and I kind of wanted to highlight a few of those today. James, if we could go to the next slide. So our ambassador program this month is going to celebrate its 25th anniversary without our volunteers here. So it's a little bit bittersweet for us. Um, this program started back in June of 1995. Uh, our volunteers are just I, I'm sure they're calling, texting, emailing Michelle every day. They want to come back to the airport. We've really decided to hold off on that because they're, they're all over the age of 55. Many of them are in that target age group that we hear about. And so we're really waiting to see what the direction is from the health department officials and the state regarding that decision. But we are going to take a moment to celebrate the fact that our program has um, been going on for 25 years. We've had 459 volunteers over that time. Bill Kerwin is the one volunteer who's been here since day one and is still here today. Betty Lilly, his partner, they both work on Wednesdays, has been here almost 25 years. She's five, six months. And we just really have the best group of people here. And, and we miss them and we're anxious to see them. And I know our customers who are here in the building miss them as well. Um, so you, you will see over the coming weeks, we're going to be doing some special things to acknowledge them. And then our plan is in October to hold a formal celebration event with them um, just to recognize their contributions to the airport and our community over the years. Next slide, James. Um, I, I did want to just touch base on Schwab Hall because this meeting provides us opportunity to reach out to people again and let them know what's going on inside the terminal building. So in May, we opened the restrooms and they're, they're beautiful, bright, um, touchless pretty much everywhere, except you have to shut the door. But other than that, they're just a great addition. The, the photo on the left is uh, where they've opened up the ceiling for the skylight. It's just gonna add so much light to that area. It's gonna totally change and transform the way that area looks. Uh, I think it'll be very welcoming. And then I've heard, and beginning of July, we'll begin moving the big oil mural that's in the building down to Concourse B. So even though we can't meet here in person, we're going to try through photos to provide customers an idea of what's going on. But when you come into the building the next time, I'm sure it's going to look totally different than the last time you were here. And we also had, next slide James, the launch of our Nashville service on Allegiant. So Allegiant announced 
two different markets, San Diego and Nashville, earlier this year, and, and they've elected to keep Nashville in their schedule. So the flights operate through August 16th. Um, it's a great schedule. You can work all day Thursday and fly out Thursday night and then come back on Sunday. And what was interesting to me is we had equal number of people on the inaugural flight flying into Tulsa from Nashville as we had leaving to Nashville. Um, this is a market that we hear regularly about from our customers that they, they want to travel to. And so even though the circumstances aren't the best, we're doing all we can to support it in hopes that Allegiant will continue the flight for the next season um, beginning next summer. And then next slide. The last thing I just wanted to hit on is the industry as a whole is really trying to educate our customers about what we're doing to keep people safe. And you've heard about that from the airlines. Um, they continue to talk about what they're doing inside the airplane and with their, with their teams. And so the airport is also going to be sharing that messaging. And so we've created the Here For You campaign. Um, we're, we're rolling out floor graphics that um, provide the distancing guidance for our customers that remind customers what they can do. And so you're going to be hearing about this more over the next few weeks, but I just wanted to mention it here on the call today. And with that, I'll turn it over to Fabio. Hey, good morning. Um, as Alexis mentioned, uh, April was probably our worst month in the history of the airport. Uh, we felt the impacts of the pandemic mid-month in March, but we had a lot of momentum in February's activity to help push us through March. Um, however, April, that activity kind of went away. Um, as we look at our revenues, they're 50% lower than they were in the previous April, 5% uh, down fiscal year to date. We did have a good strong momentum in our fiscal year carried from previous fiscal year. We were tracking at a, um, our revenues are coming in significantly higher, but that momentum has pretty much uh, been used up with the month of April. Our expenses, however, different story. Our expenses are 12% lower than they were last year. All of the cost cutting measures we implemented in March and to, and to be prepared for the slowdown have worked out well in our, in our favor. Uh, we're about 2% higher than we are were previous fiscal year, but 12% down, 1.6. We usually average anywhere about 1.8 to $2 million in expenses. So we've, we've seen a significant expense reduction. Our net operating income before depreciation, uh, significantly lower than last year, 142,000. However, we still are ahead of where we were prior year by about 1.2 million. Uh, food and beverage took a hit with the uh, reduction in passenger capacity down about 99% from where it was a year ago in April and 13% down fiscal year to date. Our retail same trajectory down about 10% fiscal year to date. Um, parking down significantly as well for revenue and activity, 14% uh, for activity as well as revenue fiscal year to date. And our ground transportation, this is, is comprised of uh, shuttle services, Uber, Lyft, uh, taxis, they were down significantly. However, in 2019, we implemented an increase in our rates for the Ubers and Lyfts, and that we felt the full effect of that in 2020 fiscal year. Rent a car is down about 8% fiscal year to date, as well as the, uh, the month over month, 80% down. Operations at Riverside, flat fiscal year to date down 35% for the month of April. And that had a lot to do with social distancing, reduction in corporate flights, as well as the aviation schools not holding, uh, holding classes. Fuel flows are down 48% for the month over month and 15 fiscal year to date. As Alexis mentioned, our passenger count for and plane passengers in April was down significantly, 5,100 passengers, as opposed to the previous year of, of just under just over 119,000. We're about 15% lower this fiscal year to date than we were prior. And our in-plane cargo is about 3% lower. Next slide, James. This slide represents our in-plane passengers. The red line is fiscal year 2020. As you can see, we were down about 50% in May. Uh, I'm sorry, in March, January, February, we were kind of teetering on where we were the prior year, slightly down. But March, we felt an effect in we pretty much bottomed out in April. We do see a increase 
a V-shaped increase uh, for fiscal year's employments thus far, but we'll continue to monitor that closely. Next slide, James. Our fiscal year to date budget to actual, um, just a comparative, our activity, we're at 34.9, our budget forecast, our actual activity, all of that momentum we carried in the previous fiscal years has been used up. We're down about two and a half percent from where we should be budgeted wise as far as our revenue goes. Um, however, our expenses, again, a different story. We're down uh, significantly from where our budget placed us to be. We're down about 10%, almost 11% lower in our actual expenses versus our uh, budgeted expenses. Next slide, James. Our fiscal year to date forecast. This basically is a proje projection of where we are uh, heading towards the end of this fiscal year, which we're close to uh, wrapping up our fiscal year. Um, our revenues look like they're gonna be about 11% lower with the reduction in April and slight reductions in May and June forecasted as well. However, our uh, expenses, if we keep the same trajectory, will be about $2 million ahead of where we projected our expenses to be based on our fiscal 2020 budget. Next slide, James. And our liquidity, uh, operating liquidity, thus far we're at 18, I'm sorry, 17 and a half million dollars, 220 days in um, April, we were at $18.1 million, 228 days. And March, we were at 18.9 at 237 days. So we're slowly using our days of cash on hand. However, we did file our first CARES Act reimbursement through the uh, federal government. And that was approximately $1.3 million in operating expense relief. So we're monitoring that and uh, we'll inform the board when we receive those funds. Uh, our goal is to submit a CARES Act grant reimbursement request monthly for operating expenses. And our projections show that we'll uh, use all of that CARES Act through February of 2021. And the next slide, James. The next slide is our debt position. Um, Basically what this shows is where our debt service is. We have $16.3 million in annual debt service obligation. We have funded all but one final payment, which is the June payment, uh, $1.3 million. We should fund that without any, any concerns. And our reserve is slightly over what we uh, project our debt service to be. We have about a $1.78 million cushion in our annual debt reserve. Any questions? Fabio, I do, um, your reference to the CARES Act funding, um, is that the FAA uh, CARES Act funding that you received or is it the uh, Tulsa County or State of Oklahoma CARES Act funding that, no, that's this, available? No, this is the FAA federal, okay. uh, federal back program. Uh, TUL received about $15.5 million, and RVS Jones received about 157000 right. both of those which uh, have been drawn on our first draw. Thank you. Any other questions for Fabio? Very good. Um, we'll move right into approving the uh, fiscal year 2021 TATE budget, or rates and fees, operating budget for our management of the parking system for both TUL and for RBS. Fabio, Alexis. Okay, approved fiscal year July 1, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. Uh, Tate budget schedule rates, fees and charges and other operating budget for management and the parking system for TUL and RBS. Uh, Tate annual budget in the amount not to exceed 44,080,878 thousand comprised of the operating budget of $24.7 million, debt service of $16 million, capital operating and capital improvement of 3.3, total 44,080,878. Tate schedule of rates, fees, and charges as part of our annual budget and the parking system management budget of $1,773,137,000 is also part of our operating budget. Management recommends approval. Does anybody have any questions on the budget? We know we reviewed it at our last meeting. 
Any questions? No, I, I think it's a great job uh, considering uh, where we are and um, uncertainty, but uh, I think you've done a good job with it. So I, I would move approval for the um, approval of the, uh, make a motion for approval of the budget. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Mary. Jeff, can you please call the roll? <clears throat> Sorry about that. Kent Harrell? Aye. Kent Harrell votes aye. Mary Smith Croft? Aye. Mary Smith Croft votes aye. Joe Robson? Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. Ty and Camus? Aye. Ty and Camus votes aye. Item number three passes. Perfect. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, number four, Alexis? Number four, approve memorandum of understanding between the city and Tate regarding the allocation of the airport revenues to the city for services performed by the city in support of the airport for fiscal year 2021 in the amount of $52,389 effective July 1, 2020 for TUL and RVS. This MOU represents the amount paid to the city for actual support services of the city of clerk Mayor, Mayor's Office, City Council, Limited Human Resource Services for the MERP uh, Administration and Limited Financial Services and which are allowed under the FA Revenue Use Policy and Federal Grant Assurance Management recommends approval. Any questions for on this item? Seeing that, I'll entertain a motion. Move approval item number four, Mary. Second, Joe. Call the roll. Kent Harrell? Aye. Kent Harrell votes aye. Mary Smith Cross? Aye. Mary Smith Cross votes aye. Joe Robson? Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. Kyan Camus? Aye. Kyan Camus votes aye. Motion number four passes. Very good. Thank you very much, Jeff. Number five. Okay. Number five is to approve a temporary rate adjustment to aircraft parking under our rate fees and charges for signatory airlines. So this is a temporary adjustment to lower the rate for aircraft parking. So American Airlines <laughs> approached the airport a couple of weeks ago and asked if we could provide relief for their parking costs at the airport. Our rate fees and charges have always stipulated what the fees are for specific areas. For instance, taxiway November parking has been 10 cents per thousand pounds um, since back you know, back in late, the late 2000s, early teens. Um, and their request was, would we consider providing that lower rate for all aircraft parking? Um, what my recommendation is, is that we lower parking that is on taxiway uniform uniform, which is technically a closed taxiway at the west end of the airport down to 10 cents, because it does not obstruct access for anyone. Um, and then that we lower, and this is all temporarily, the parking on other taxiways to 32 cents per thousand pounds. And this is only for signatory airlines. Non-signatory carriers who would request parking on our taxiways would still pay the 40 cents per thousand pounds. With our rates, fees, and charges, we have traditionally provided a 25% premium cost for non-signatory carriers. And by lowering the rate to 32 cents, we're providing that 25% discount. Um, for our signatory carriers. And so for American in particular, because um, they're the only carrier at this time that is using parking outside of the terminal area, um, we would make this retroactive back to March 11th. And then this temporary rate would expire on December 31st, 2020, or sooner if they should vacate um, those areas prior to that date. Just so you know, the impact fiscally for the airport would mean that we'd be providing a credit of $21,662.29, and that is for March through April of parking. We haven't invoiced yet for May. We're waiting um, for this to be considered, and then we'll provide the invoice for May. Questions? Yeah, Alexis, that's going to work out to be about $10,000 a month. Is that correct? 
It's about that. Um, so in, for March, it was about 4,000. And then for April, it's about 17,000. Um, so just to give you an idea, total for both months, the, the total invoice is around $300,000 for both months that, that they've been paying for parking. So this equates to about a 9% reduction in their total invoice. Okay. Uh, Alexis, i just curious, have they started uh, taking some of the planes away? Or how, do, yeah. do we have an idea how long they're, they're planning on keeping those? Yeah, so I asked that question myself. Um, they have started moving aircraft. We've seen, I mean, I think at our high, we had around 75 airplanes on the airfield. And most recently we have around 47. What we've seen is they, I mean, like the 757, they ended up parking um, and the, they moved those planes off site to permanently park them somewhere else. I think that those are not even going to be flying anymore. They've been retiring aircraft. Um, the 737s are the aircraft that they're putting back into service. And so those are the ones that we're starting to see um, leave. And, and then as far as the length of duration, you know, American is, is pivoting. They're using a lot of their larger aircraft for cargo shipments. And until the demand for international traffic really resumes, it's hard to say how long these, these larger aircraft that are actually on the runway will be here. Um, they couldn't give me a, a, a good date as to how long they're going to be here. It, it really all depends on demand. Okay. Well, I would make a motion to approve the uh, adjustment, lower rate. Second, this is Camp Harrell. Jeff, can you please call the roll? Thank you. Uh, Kent Harrell. Aye. Mary Smith Cross. Aye. Joe Robson. Aye. Kyan Camus. Aye. Uh, item number five passes. Very good. Thank you. Uh, item number six. So I'd like to take six and seven together. So. Item number six is to accept a pending FAA AIP grant in an amount up to $6,850,000. And this is for the West Runway, runway 18 right, 36 left for the pavement rehab project. And item number seven is to accept a pending FAA AIP supplemental discretionary grant in an amount up to $5,390,000. Again, for the West Runway to fund the portion of the project that has to do with the runway safety area. Um, just of note, so typically for grant number six or, or item number six, um, typically the FAA provides 90% of the funding and the airport provides 10%, but for that item, um, they're providing 100% of the funding that it's being supplemented with CARES Act funding. And so um, this has been a project that you all have already awarded projects for in June of, of 19. You awarded, uh, or we accepted some FAA grants to help pay for like preliminary design work for this project. And in a few minutes, we'll award a construction contract, contract pending the receipt of grant funds. But um, this is just another great example of how the FAA funds necessary infrastructure projects at our airport. And I would highly recommend accepting their money. Any questions for Alexis on this uh, number six and number seven? This is Joe Robson. I would uh, move to approve uh, number six and number seven. This is Mary. I would second that. Jeff, can you please call the roll? Yes. For number six and seven, Kent Harrell. Aye. Kent Harrell votes aye. Mary Smith Croft. Aye. Mary Smith Cross votes aye. Joe Robson? Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. Kine Camus? Aye. Kine Camus votes aye. Motion number six and seven pass. Very good. Item number eight. So number eight is to approve directors and officers employee liability insurance policy from Navigators Insurance Company and the premium in an amount not to exceed, exceed $28,267. The rate did go up over what we paid last year. Our broker did go out for bids, and this was the lowest um, 
interested that we received that met our requirement. Okay, any questions for Alexis on this? Move approval item eight. This is Joe. Second. Sorry. This is this Ken Harold. Second by Mary. Uh, Jeff, please call the roll. Uh, for number eight, uh, Kent Harrell. Aye. Mary Smith Cross. Aye. Mary Smith Cross votes aye. Joe Robson. Aye. Mary Smith, or Joe Robson votes aye. Kyan Kamitz. Aye. Kyan Kamitz votes aye. Item number eight is passed. Very good. Item number nine. So item number nine is to approve an award agreement with the Adams Asphalt Maintenance for repairs and maintenance to the north half of the economy lot. I actually think it should be the south half of the economy lot. Fabio can probably confirm. Yep. Yes, that's a typo. Yeah. It should be the south half. South half of the economy lot. For So what we, last month you approved a contract for them to do the north half. It looks fantastic. I mean, it, it totally... The, the lines you can see, their stop marks, it looks great. Um, we have actually seen an increase in use of the economy lot, but we'd like to go ahead and complete that project while traffic is still relatively light. Um, just as a side note, unrelated to this, we did start shuttle service in the economy a lot again this week. So um, this repair work will basically be cleaning, um, crack sealing, seal coating, striping, all of the things necessary um, to get it up to speed for the, and, and that'll be good for 15 years probably. So Fabio and his team went out and got touch base with 10 companies, received four bids, and this was the lowest responsible bidder. Very good. Um, do we have any questions on number nine? Boom. I've just done. I am nine. This is Joe Robson. We have a motion by Joe. Do we have a second? Second by Kent Harrell. Very good. Jeff, please call the roll. For item number nine, aye. Kent Harrell. Aye. Kent Harrell votes aye. Mary Smith Crofts? Aye. Mary Smith Crofts votes aye. Joe Robson? Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. Kyan Camus? Aye. Kyan Camus votes aye. Item number nine is passed. Very good. Um, number 10. <clears throat> so number 10 is to approve a tower camera sponsorship agreement with Cox Media Group, which is the Fox 23 station for one year with two one-year mutual options to renew. And this is for a camera that's located above gate A10 on the concourse. Um, this is subject to the rules of our airport security program. Um, in exchange for providing them this access for the camera, the airport receives promotional consideration, which includes 15-second um, commercial spots, as well as regular mentions by their meteorologists, usually when they're doing weather um, updates, so. Very good. Any questions for Alexis on number 10? Move approval item 10. Second, Kent. Uh, Jeff, please call the roll. For item number 10, Kent Harrell? Aye. Kent Harrell votes aye. Mary Smith Cross? Aye. Mary Smith Cross votes aye. Joe Robson? Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. Kyan Camus? Aye. Kyan Camus also votes aye. Num item number 10 is passed. Very good. Item number 11. Okay, so item 11 is to approve the Tulsa Airports Improvement Trust Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Program Policy Document. Um, so under FAA requirements, the airport has a disadvantaged business enterprise, enterprise program that <laughs> provides um, a level playing field for minority owned businesses to participate in airport contract opportunities. The last program document that the board approved was back when Charlie Sublett was on the board. It was his signature on the document, and there have been several changes. Specifically, um, my name is, has been added, Sandra Sharon, our ACDBLO, an updated org chart. There are new prompt payment requirements that we are acknowledging in the agreement. Um, we've added Riverside Airport to our program documents. 
and we've also added our new triennial goals. And so this will be available for the public to review on our website, and um, I would fully recommend approval of this program document. Very good. Any questions for Alexis? Do I have a motion? Move, move approval item number 11. This is Mary. Second. This is Cayenne. Jeff, please call the roll. You. Kent Harrell. Aye. Kent Harrell votes aye. Mary Smith Cross. Aye. Mary Smith Croft votes aye. Joe Robson? Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. Kine Camus? Aye. Kine Camus votes aye. Look, item number 11 is passed. Very good. Item number 12. So, item 12 is to approve a purchase agreement with Asbestos Handlers Incorporated in the amount of $38,900. So this allows for the removal of pipe insulation um, that is hindering the removal of a 48-inch flue on a Schwab Hall project. Um, so they're gonna come in, take care of any necessary removal of materials that are needed in order to safely remove that flue. Very good. Um, this is a non-budgeted item, right, Alexis? For the project? Or? Yes, it, it is non-budgeted for the project. Um, however, we, we don't think it's going to significant, I mean it's a small dollar amount, it's not going to significantly impact the total project cost and quite frankly I was very pleased with the cost considering what it is that they had to do and the fact that they could respond so quickly and we could address it so quickly. Good, good, good. good. Any other Any questions other? for Alexis? Mr. Joe, I move approval for item 12. Second, Mary. Jeff, please call the roll. <coughs> yes, uh, for item number 12, Kent Harrell. Aye. Kent Harrell votes aye. Mary Smith Cross. Aye. Mary Smith Cross votes aye. Joe Robson. Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. Kyan Camus. Aye. Kyan Camus votes aye. Item number 12 is approved. Very good. Um, item number 13. Okay, so item 13 is to accept it and approve the award of contract to APAC Central in the amount of 11,350,000 subject to the actual receipt of FAA grant funds. Um, this is for the runway, the West Runway, 18 right, 36 left, uh, runway safety area and pavement rehab project. Um, there were two bids received. This bid was significantly below the engineer's estimate, um, and APAC agreed to meet the DBE goal requirement of 9.5%. And so I would recommend award of this contract to APAC. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, move, uh, was there a motion for number 13? <laughs> Sorry. Move, move approval item 13. Second. Second. Okay, good. All those, uh, Jeff, please call the roll. Yes, for item number 13, Kent Harrell. Aye. Kent Harrell votes aye. M Mary Smith Crofts. Aye. M aye. Mary Smith Crofts votes aye. Joe Robson. Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. Kyan Camus. Aye. Kyan Camus votes aye. Item number 13 is approved. Number 14. So 14 is to award a contract with Atkins North America for construction observation services in an amount not to exceed 559000 mm -hmm. And this is for that project with APAC that you just approved. So um, construction observation services basically means that they'll be out there and monitoring the project, making sure it's th that the contractor's complying with all of our requirements. Ms. Joe, I would move approval for item 14. This is coming in second. Jeff, please call the roll. Yes, for item number 14, Kent Harrell. Aye. Kent Harrell votes aye. Mary Smith Cross. Aye. Mary Smith Cross votes aye. Joe Robson. Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. Connie Camus. Aye. Kyan Camus votes aye. 
Item number 14 is approved. Item number 15. I'm gonna take 15 and 16 together. So 15 is to approve a change order number six with Manhattan Construction in the amount of $70,304. And number 16 is to approve a change of quantities with Manhattan in the amount of $28,044.28. Both of these are related to the Schwab Hall project. Um, the change order is specifically addresses the removal of the flu, a new air handling unit, um, just miscellaneous items for that project, and then the change of quantities um, primarily represents a, a, an increased need for scaffolding needed and, and the removal or increase in carpeting um, for the project. So I would recommend approval of these two items. Any questions for Alexis on number 15 or 16? <laughs> I know this is Gerald. I would move approval for item 15, 15 and 16. Second, Mary. Jeff, please call the roll. Yes, for item number 15 and 16, Kent Harrell. Aye. Kent Harrell votes aye. Mary Smith Crofts. Aye. Mary Smith Croft votes aye. Joe Robson. Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. Kyan Kamas. Aye. Kind Camus votes aye. Number 15 and 16 are approved. Very good. Uh, number 17. So number 17 is to approve the non-signatory signatory air carrier sublease agreement with Frontier Airlines effective March 1st, 2020 for one year at the standard non-signatory rate. Very good. Any questions for Alexis on number 17? Move approval item 17. Second. Jeff, please right. call the roll. For item number 17, uh, Kent Harrell. Aye. Kent Harrell votes aye. Mary Smith Cross. Aye. Mary Smith Cross votes aye. Joe Robson. Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. Kyan Camus. Aye. Kyan Camus votes aye. Item number 17 is approved. Thank you. Uh, item number 18. Okay, 18 is to approve a sublease agreement with William Meeks III and Rebecca Meeks for 15 years with two five-year options to extend, um, effective August 1st. This is at Riverside Airport for Lot 7, Block 7A in the Northeast Hangar area. Any questions for Alexis? This is Joe, I'd move approval for item 18. This is Cayenne, second. Jeff, please call the roll. For item number 18, Kent Harrell. Aye. Kent Harrell votes aye. Mary Smith Crofts. Aye. Mary Smith Crofts votes aye. Joe Robson. Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. And Kyan Camus. Aye. Kyan Camus votes aye. Motion, or no, item number 18 is approved. Okay, item number 19. This is to approve acknowledgement consent to collateral assignment from Mark Schwartz to MidFirst Private Bank, again at Riverside, Lot 5, Block 13 in the Northeast Hangar area. Do have a motion to approve? Move approval item 19. Mary? Second. Kent. Jeff, please call the roll. For item number 19, Kent Harrell. Aye. Uh, Kent Harrell votes aye. Mary Smith Cross? Aye. Mary Smith Cross votes aye. Joe Robson? Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. Kyan Camus? Aye. Kyan Camus votes aye. And number 19 is approved. Item number 20. Okay, the last item to approve an assignment of sublease and acknowledgement consent to assignment from Robert Norman II and Kimberly A. Norman to the Hearn Family Revocable Trust dated April 10th, 1998, as amended and restated February 15th, 2012, effective upon closing, but no later than June 15th, 2020. Again, for Riverside Airport, Lot 8, Block 7A in the Northeast Hangar area. Any questions? Move approval item 20, this is Joe. Second, this is Mary. Jeff, please call the roll. 
Yes, thank you. Uh, number 20, uh, Kent Harrell. Aye. Kent Harrell votes aye. Mary Smith Crofts. Aye. Mary Smith Cross votes aye. Joe Robson? Aye. Joe Robson votes aye. Kyan Camus? Aye. Kyan Camus votes aye. Item number 20 is approved. Excellent. Uh, is there any other TAIT business? Seeing none, is there any TAA business? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved, Ms. Joe. <laughs> Second, this is Mary. Jeff, please call the roll. Motion to adjourn. Uh, Kent Harrell? Aye. Kent Harrell votes aye. Mary Smith Crofts? Aye. Thank you. Mary Smith Crofts votes aye. Joe Robson? Aye. Joe Bo Robson votes aye. Kind Camus? Aye. Kind Camus votes aye. Uh, motion to adjourn is approved. Very good. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Jeff.